And welcome back to You Regina 120. I'm Jeff Cliff, and today we're going to be talking about uh, another logical fallacy. Uh, if you haven't seen any of the other videos in this series, I encourage you to go check them out, uh, especially in this case the forest versus trees video, because uh, we are going to be building on some of the stuff we've spoken about earlier. So, uh, getting into the meat of this, uh, what is the argument from authority? So the, the argument from authority is a uh, when you're in a situation and you're uh, basically going to uh, refer to or defer uh, to some authority or some third party with information that pertains to your argument uh, and uh, do so in an uncritical way. So the, uh, the formal way of looking at it, as we've kind of looked at other uh, fallacies in the past, is A says P, or something on, on, on some subject matter S. Uh, so A is the expert in this case, or the authority. Uh, step two, A should be trusted uh, on subject S. Uh, so that they're a relevant authority, uh, that they're you know, trusted in some regard, and then therefore, P, the original claim, is true. Now this isn't uh, actually a completely valid way of arguing. Uh, what should be here instead of this P being true, is P is probable. Whenever you're deferring to an expert, you're uh, doing so in a way that is contingent upon their credibility. That that is uh, not necessarily true, but true as far as you can basically tell. Um, and so th this is kind of a, a, a subtle point, because we rely on experts all the time. Uh, when you use a computer, your computer, the symbols that it shows you are defined by you know, some standards body that defines Unicode. They're the experts for what you should be seeing when your computer displays information to you. Uh, your, your computer probably runs the Linux kernel, and so there's people like Linus Torvalds who are experts in operating systems and that you have to trust knows what they're doing in designing the operating system and the kernel that it runs on. Uh, and this is not the, the limit of that. You, you, you name it. There's, there's something that you rely on, no matter who you are, to understand the, the world around you, from farm implements to computer technology. A lot of it is stuff that you don't understand, uh, no matter how much of the world you've got in your head. And so we're constantly deferring to authorities in some way, shape, or form to understand and to troubleshoot the, the technology, the political situations, the religious ideas, uh, everything around us has someone that we would go to uh, in, or, or at least most things around us will have something or someone we can go to to, to vet information about. Because the world is a very complex place. As we've mentioned in Forest versus Trees, uh, there's too much to be an expert in everything. And so there's going to be people who, are, who specialize and become an expert in many different things. And, so that, and again, this is not to say that you should never use third parties to you know, of high repute to base your theory or, or your argument or your ideas upon, we all have to do this. This is something that always happens. Uh, but, and here's the big but, uh, when you do so, you should keep in mind that you are in fact doing so, that you're, you're depending upon them being legitimate and depending upon them not having problems, uh, or at least that there is no problems in the chain between you and them. So let, let's take a look at how this will work in practice. So if we start with our authority, and then have you somewhere in the kind of background, if, you, if you're trying to get information from them, if the information starts at them and it just goes to you, that may not be sufficient for some purposes. What you really want at least for non-social facts, is for there to be some feature of the universe, some bit of information that actually describes something worth knowing, that the expert or the authority has access to, and then provides to you in a way that doesn't uh, involve them uh, manipulating the data uh, in an unfair or, or biased way. If this second loop is not present, then you run the risk of them basically either making something up or 
just not having the information to begin with, in which case you may as well have just made it up yourself or you know, pulled it out of a hat because you're not gaining anything in that case. There's uh, situations where uh, it's, it's not necessarily a good idea to base your, your argument or your, uh, your, your opinion purely on one expert if experts disagree with each other. And sometimes they do disagree with each other. Even in uh, relatively uh, high levels of consensus issues like climate change, there are some respectable scientists out there that still have some level of skepticism over certain parts of uh, the, for example, IPCC's uh, results. This is how science improves. They take into account criticisms and people who don't agree. They find out why and they look at the data. Again, this is some a, a, a big issue. Uh, obviously, the, the majority of the IPCC's uh, results are going to be fairly accurate, but they're, they're not perfect. They've underestimated a lot of the changes that they've uh, we, we've been witnessing over the past 10 years. That's just one example where they're, they're kind of not perfect. They're, they're an authority to go to. They have access to a lot of data, but they're not perfect. So, and they're not certainly not the only example where experts will disagree with each other. Um, if you find yourself uh, making an argument where you're referring to one expert, see if you can find an, uh, another expert to cite. Uh, if you're at the point where you're, you don't have access to the raw data yourself, or you don't have access to the sense experience, or ex sense experience to verify your claims, uh, having multiple uh, experts or multiple th authorities to go to uh, certainly doesn't hurt. Uh, of course, experts can be biased, and groups of experts can be biased. So it's not a foolproof method of removing this kind of uncertainty from your argument to just add more experts and to add more citations. That is a one way of getting better, increasing the probability, uh, but it's not perfect, and you're still going to have a level of doubt involved in your argument. You can usually tell uh, whether uh, or if the uh, appeal to authority is being misused, uh, if there's a big hat involved. Uh, this is one of the, the kind of ways of, of telling if, if you're faced with something uh, where the authority is, is kind of being used out of the uh, level that it may be justified at. Uh, it, it's an easy one to, to observe, it's an easy one to look at, uh, because you just look at if there's a hat involved, uh, how big is this hat? Um, this is just an, an experiment or experience thing, you can check it out for yourself. And uh, so, you, you know, experts can be biased, they can intentionally mislead you, uh, they can intentionally mis- or th they, they can be misled by themselves, and sometimes uh, it, it's not even that they're being misleading or that they're biased, but the media itself through which you experience them, uh, the media that allows you to communicate with them, uh, is finite and insufficient to get their point across. And so you'll see this all the time on TV, where you'll get people who are very uh, intelligent and uh, have done a lot of research in particular topics, uh, and yet when they try to get their point across in a five-minute soundbite, or, or less than five-minute soundbite, uh, they miss crucial facts, and they miss crucial details, and they aren't able to uh, cite other authorities that they've gotten some of their data from, and you only get the ability to get part of their message through. And yes, that part of their message supports the, the narrative that whoever has brought them on to that particular uh, form of media, so for example a television show, uh, can get their point across, but the expert can't get the full uh, detail and level of their idea across. Uh, so, you know, for example, uh, if in the past couple of weeks uh, there's been a fork of uh, Bitcoin called Bitcoin XT. Uh, and if you don't think that Bitcoin XT is the end of the world, uh, there are certain forums in the Bitcoin community where your uh, message will just not be shown. Uh, so this is an unfortunate uh, limitation of the debate between the two sides of this fork, which is really unnecessary. Uh, and if you were to rely on experts to, you know, say one way or the, the other, uh, you would find that the experts would be very limited in what they could tell you. Uh, experts and authorities have been wrong in the past, uh, going all the way back to Aristotle. Aristotle was, a, you know, we're going to talk about Aristotle later, later but uh, he did a lot of experiments. He conducted uh, science, or at least something very you know, close to what we would understand as modern science, uh, and he learned a lot from it. And the, the Western world took his knowledge as fact for well over a thousand years uh, afterwards, uh, to the point where when Galileo uh, started to challenge some of the ideas of the Aristotelians, uh, that 
the, 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 the raw data Galileo was generating was called into question purely because it contradicted with what the authority, in this case Aristotle, who had been dead for over a thousand years, uh, had said. Uh, so th this is an example where you can, you can go very wrong, even trusting someone as, as, as uh, important and as knowledgeable and as careful as Aristotle was, uh, because they can still be wrong, the, the data that they needed to, to know certain things about the universe may not have been available to them at that time. You know, yes, it's worth reading and understanding what they thought, but it's not, you know, it's, it's not perfect. And so you can always improve on it. Uh, here, here's some examples of arguments from authorities, and we've kind of touched on this particular one already, but here it is again. Quote, global warming is true because Al, Get oh, Al Gore said so in his movie. Well, Global warming may be true or not, it is, but it's not going to be because Al Gore said it's true. I mean, Al Gore is a smart guy. Uh, I haven't, you know, read that much from from him, but I mean, from all accounts, he seems to have been pretty successful in his life. And you know, there's reasons to believe some of the things that he says. But he's not a climate. You know, he 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 may even have some backgrounds in climate science. I don't know. But even if he did. The reason to believe that global warming is something that's affecting the world isn't because he said so, it's because we can observe the, uh, the, the height of the clouds and the, the, the you know, level of the troposphere and the, the amount of carbon in the oceans and observables like this uh, will inform us one way or the other. Whether or not Al Gore says it is uh, should only be used as an absolute last resort. Here's another example, you know, just following orders uh, is an argument that you know, you're ordered uh, to believe something or to do something because you were told to do so. Uh, well, that may be a reason why you did so, but it doesn't necessarily excuse you on a legal standpoint, and it certainly doesn't justify what you did, um, depending, of course, what it is. Uh, there is, uh, if, if you go back to 1984, the, the book by uh, George Orwell, uh, you'll, you'll find that at the, the end of the book, the here's a spoiler if you haven't read the book, you can plug your ears, but uh, the main character is, is forced to confess that he loves Big Brother. Uh, and so this is just sort of an example of, you know, no matter who you are, you can be made to do the bidding of the authority if the authority hits you enough. Uh, and so that's worth uh, taking into account as well. Uh, so here, here's another example, and, uh, and I'm pulling some of these examples from uh, some of these uh, Christian websites, which is kind of interesting to go look because Again, they, they respect that this is argument from authority is an invalid way of arguing. And it's interesting to go to people, even if whom you may disagree with, uh, to, to, to get information and to look at their experts, look at their experts and their authorities to see what they're saying as well on the topics that you're interested in. So here's another example. Quote, this textbook says that evolution is a fact and the Earth is billions of years old. These textbooks are written by scientists and scientists are the only ones who have authorities in these issues. You know, therefore, you should believe that evolution is a fact that the Earth is billions of years old. Okay, here's another example. If your only evidence that the Earth is you know, over a billion years old, or that evolution happens, is a single textbook by a single scientist, no matter who the scientist is, that is not necessarily sufficient to, to justify belief in that particular topic. You can go to other scientists. You can conduct experiments. We, we could, you know, if you're really interested, start going and looking at the geology, looking at the rock formations, you know, looking at the data. Uh, can you do that in, in just an argument? Not necessarily, but you can always do more than just citing a single expert, uh, no matter what the topic, uh, especially for something as, as provable as evolution, and as provable as the age of the Earth. Uh, it's not necessarily sufficient to just say, oh, this guy believes it, so therefore I believe it, or this guy believes it, therefore you should believe it. It's just not enough. And it's not a, a, an honest way of arguing to, to use that and to expect people to believe based on that. So here's another example from when I was about a, a second year. Uh, there was a student that I was a, uh, one of my peers who thought that even though I had taken a couple of philosophy classes, uh, my philosophy classes were taught in a different way than his were. And so I didn't learn from ontology down. And so he would have viewed, quote, you know, my prof said that philosophy has to be st structured from ontology down, therefore that's the only way that philosophy can be viewed. Well, again, who's this prof? Why did he say that? Did he mishear? You know, was this person who was just in a first year philosophy class, you know, just not understanding something that the prof had said and misinterpreting it? Uh, 
uh, who knows? There's a lot of ways that that could have gone wrong. But one thing's for sure, uh, there's a lot of different ways of approaching philosophy. And we can go and look at different philosophers to see how they approached it. Uh, but again, a single person and their particular view is not necessarily the definitive view on a topic so large. Here's another one. Uh, quote, courts say that abortion is okay, therefore abortion is okay. Again, th this is another example of where courts say what's legal, uh, not what's necessarily okay or moral, although there's going to be some, uh, you know, n someone in a society is going to have to uh, kind of draw a line as far as what is acceptable or not, but again, it doesn't have to be a court. And if your only argument for the legality or non-legality or or rather, morality or non-morality of a single action is a single court, you can always question that court. You should question whatever you come up to with an authority like this, so that you can actually find out why it is that it's not, a court, or not okay, or why it is in this case that it is okay. Uh, there's going to be evidence either way, you should look for it. And so, you know, sometime there's, as we spoke about in the uh, argument from the Beard video, uh, there's going to be a, a judgment call that has to be made. And so someone in the society has to make an arbitrary judgment call to decide when, you know, what is and is not considered, for example, abortion. Uh, this is an, a judgment call that someone is going to have to make. And so can you question that call? Can you question their authority to make that call? Absolutely. But again, you, you have to keep in mind that someone has to make that call. So here's another example. Quote, how can you talk about this? Are you a biologist? Are you a computer scientist? Unquote. So here, here's an example of this where uh, if you are um, a biologist, you, you probably have a degree or, or have you know, some experience uh, commensurate to, to being able to say that. But again, you can always look at the standards that are being applied here. And so uh, if you uh, volunteer at the DIY Bio Toronto uh, enough that you have learned everything that a biologist would learn towards a four-year degree, which you could probably pick up in less than four years by hanging out there, uh, you could get to the point where you're not really a biologist, but you still have every bit of knowledge and every bit of social context that a biologist would have. Uh, and so there, there's going to be this kind of uh, uh, issue between what Thomas Kuhn would call normal and revolutionary science, uh, between people who have the, 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 the authority and the identity to call themselves authorities and to be able to discuss with other authorities uh, subject matters such as biology um, and those who you know, are, are not going to have that. And so it, it's, it's going to be an issue when we look at arguments between people and, and involving information where the it's going to be difficult to, to get your point across unless you can cite, again, an authority. And the, there's problems with that because it, the new uh, ways of looking at the world may not be fully represented when you do that. Of course, where I got this is, again, someone who is skeptical of evolution being something true, uh, when you know, th they may have a, a hard time dealing with that uh, or, or, or convincing people of that. Um, but there may be exceptions uh, in similar areas where the exact same problems may come up. Uh, genetic modification is something that's available to the, the you know, average person in Toronto at this point. And so there may be things that we can develop uh, that we're not necessarily thinking of, that people who are not biologists uh, may end up even getting a, a step up on biologists in the not too distant future. It'll be worth checking out. Uh, as mentioned in the previous video, uh, you can you can misinterpret, as, and as we've kind of mentioned before, uh, what the authority says. And so if, if you, even if you've got it right from the horse's mouth, uh, they, they may have misspoke, uh, there may be a problem with the media that you, you know, got it through. Um, and in general, you can always call into question whether or not the, the, the information that you've gotten is complete. Although, like with all of these uh, being, you know, skeptical of and, and calling into question of authority stances, uh, you have to be careful with this because uh, recently Conservapedia uh, got really burned by doing this, where they were uh, kind of skeptical that the email uh, that they got from their skeptics uh, happened to go through okay, and just the way that they pulled it off uh, made them look very bad. Uh, again, it might be worth checking out that, but that's kind of an aside. Uh, in, in relation to the video 32, uh, and, and we've kind of mentioned this already as well, 
uh, authority sometimes does have to make arbitrary decisions, and they have to to do so in a way that makes the fallacy of the beard uh, applicable. So, you know, you don't have to accept it uncritically, but keep in mind that uh, that is something that is going to come up. One last point uh, on, on this kind of topic uh, is, especially on Facebook forwards, you'll see this a lot, uh, where people will cite quote-unquote science as an authority, as if there's a single person who is the person for science. Now, Neil deGrasse Tyson is pretty close to that, if anyone in the world is right now. But even he isn't science. He's a person. He has limitations in his knowledge. Uh, he probably knows where to go for practically any question you could ask him, but there may still be things that he will get wrong, and that he will, that, you know, even in, in his videos, he's suggested to be skeptical of him, because that's important in science. And if you're just accepting what, quote, science says without question, you're not actually participating in science, and you're not actually living up to the spirit of what science means, and the, tr the tradition that has led us from thousands of years ago to as many advances and as many breakthroughs as we've been able to have. We should always question authority. Question authority in every situation where uh, you feel is a, it, it, it is important or it, is a, uh, it, it could be questioned. Uh, sometimes you should question authority even if it supports what you think and what you like and people that you like and people that you respect. Uh, the, the, the basis of science is this, this always questioning, this, this being able to, to see this argument from authority being made and to call it out when it happens uh, in every single place where it is used. Of course, this is a tiring thing. You may not always want to do it, uh, but you will find that you can, the big advances can be made when an authority says something that isn't necessarily true or where the, the even if it's true within normal science, there's a different way of looking at things that allows more meaningful conclusions to be drawn when it isn't necessarily believed just because it comes from authority. So, if you have any questions, uh, is there any questions from the audience today? No questions? Okay. Um, feel free to uh, question everything that I just said in any uh, comment thread where this video is posted. Um, you should be uh, not necessarily taking anything from an authority, but again, there's go you're going to have to at some point uh, just be very careful what you take from what authority, and then hopefully, uh, good luck with that. I will see you in the next video. See you then.